Praise the Lord. Amen. Shall we rise up for a moment as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for bringing us to this session again. Thank you, Lord, for what you've been teaching us as we've been going through this series on leadership. We are praying, O oh Lord, that you open our eyes of understanding at this time, once again, in Jesus' name. We are praying that your truth will so much impact our lives. And we'll go out of this Congress, this conference, and we'll be dynamites for the Lord in Jesus' name. We pray that you'll glorify yourself. Through us, this ministry will be established and will expand. And a church you are building that the gates of hell cannot prevail against. Use us as instruments in that church in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can please be seated. We come to another important session in our leadership series. Already I've told you and I'm telling you over and over so that whenever you listen to any of the cases, you'll hear what I'm saying. That leadership is a composite thing that is you need quite a combination of qualities and characteristics in your life. If you're going to be a leader, appointed, anointed, empowered, energized, equipped for the work of the Lord. And we're taking the letters of the word leadership to spell out the qualifications and the characteristics that we all need that will become effective leaders in the vineyard of the Lord in the kingdom of God. L for love in Christ-like leadership. E for effectiveness of competent leadership. A for the anointing for consecrated leaders. D for the discipline of crucified leaders. E for the exploits of charismatic leaders. R for resourcefulness of creative leaders. S for signs for commissioned leaders. H for holiness in Christian leaders. I for intercession by compassionate leaders. And P for progress through courageous leadership. And we come tonight to look at the exploits of charismatic leaders. In Daniel chapter 11 verse 32. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Actually, when you read Daniel chapter 11, you're in the midst of the revelation of God concerning the time of the great tribulation and the time of the Antichrist. The Antichrist will come in and the Antichrist will have some great, great, great qualities, qualifications and characteristics that the people of the world are looking for. And one of the characteristics of the Antichrist will be that he'll be a great communicator and he will have polished his human relations so well that he will flatter the people of God, he will flatter the children of Israel. And when he flatters them so much and exalts them and lifts them up, then the children of Israel will accept the Antichrist as the one that was going to bring peace because everybody will be looking for peace. He will corrupt them by flatteries. Then he tells us at that time, there will be some people that do know their God and they will be able to have the revelation that this is not the Christ, this is not the Messiah, this is not the one we're looking for. And at that time, those that do know their God, in that time of the great tribulation of the Antichrist, they'll be strong. Strong against all the flatteries of the Antichrist. And strong against all the maneuvering of the Antichrist. And they will do exploits. If that will be so at the time of the Antichrist, it's also so today. You know that many churches, they don't really understand. And they were not seeing anything to take anything from anybody that God is using, either outside this church or in the church. But you see, there are some people that come in, and they come in by flattery. And when they come to you by flattery, they may come to your church, your local church, and they flatter you, and they exalt you, and they lift you up, and they kind of feed your ego and your pride. And you feel, this is the man. And then you are corrupted by their flatteries. And then it says, but there will be some people, they have the eyes of an eagle. And they know they are God. 
and they know the ways of their God and they know the appointment of their God what I mean is they know if the appointment of God the anointing of God is upon him and they can tell because they know they know God they have his revelation and they have insight into the spiritual realm and one of the qualities of leadership discernment they have discernment and they will know that this is not for real and those people that do know their God and they have the revelation of the Almighty, they'll be strong and they will do exploits. And I cannot tell you how many times, you know, some people have come in and they're coming from outside. It may be from overseas, it may be from the land here. And they come and they begin to flatter and they say, you know, we have heard about this deeper life, this, this and this. And then I'm watching and you don't nod. You don't agree and you don't disagree you're just seeing what direction are we going here but the people that do know their god if you're a leader that knows the lord and the lord has called you and appointed you to the ministry and you have the gifts of the spirit you'll be able to see through and then you'll be able to do exploits and you'll preserve the church of the living god that's one of the things you'll find in charismatic leaders i use that word charismatic in the sense that the greek word charismata is used charismata means in the greek spiritual gifts the gifts of divine power charismatic gifts that enable believers and ministers when the need arises to minister in ways beyond mere human capability or ingenuity and those gifts you find in first corinthians chapter 12 in first corinthians chapter 12 reading there from verse 7 in first corinthians chapter 12 reading from verse 7 but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with her the reason why the lord gives us the spirit of god the administration of the spirit the oppression of the spirit and the dynamite in the spirit the reason why god gives us is to profit the church is to benefit the church and then he begins to number them and name them to the one is given the spirit of the word by the spirit the word of wisdom and to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit and to another faith by the same spirit to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit to another the working of miracles by the same spirit and then it says to another prophecy and to another design of spirits discernment discernment you are able to see through otherwise you're just going to hand over the church to some people that you know will ruin the church you must have discerning of spirits and to another diverse kinds of tongues to another interpretation of tongues verse 11 all these walkers that one and self in spirit dividing to every man severally as he will i told you yesterday or maybe this morning i think yesterday and this morning as i sought the face of the lord and i actually studied the charisma the charismata the gifts of the spirit and i studied them through and through and i looked for people in the bible that had these gifts because you see all those days in the early in the early part of the ministry and in the earlier part of my own christian life when i was introduced to the holy ghost the baptism in the holy ghost and the breakthrough through the holy ghost and the blessings that come upon you as an individual and upon the ministry also because of the gifts of the spirit i began to study i began to find out is it possible for somebody to have more than one of the gifts of the spirits because many of our young people at that time that are seeking the lord together they said god is not going to give everything to one person and he's going to give one to this fellow and one to this fellow and one to this fellow and when he gives you one that's sufficient for you and as i began to look into the word of god i saw a man like elisha and i traced the life and the ministry of elisha that man did exploits and there's no time tonight for me to show you the word of wisdom from elisha and the word of knowledge from elisha and the discerning of spirits from elisha and the gift of the working of miracles from elisha and the gift of faith through elisha and the gift of healing and raising the dead through elisha and the gift of prophecy through elisha the only two you don't find speaking in tongues and interpretation because that is reserved to the new testament and then i went on to the new testament and i began to look at the life of paul the apostle and again as you look at the lives of the paul of the apostle and you look at all the gifts you'll find everything complete in paul the apostle the wisdom 
a word of wisdom and in knowledge a word of knowledge and the design of spirit that you find in him and do you remember when that lady was following her time these are the men of god that show unto us the way of salvation and paul the apostle discerned immediately that that is not of the holy ghost this is spirit of divination and he said i challenge you and i charge you come out of her and then the design of spirit walking with the walking of miracles everything combined together and the evil spirit came out immediately and then you will find the gift of faith of course because he was preaching the gospel and saw that woman that person that was lame and then looking at him he perceived that he had faith to be healed and he said rise up on your feet and he woke up and he rose up from his feet immediately and of course the working of miracles do you remember when paul the apostle was preaching and there was this young fellow that fell down from the window and then it was like the fellow was dead and paul went there said trouble not yourself and raised him up and then continued this preaching the working of miracles and of course the gift of healing and then the prophecy has shown to you a mystery we shall not all sleep but we shall be raised from the dead the death of the prophetic utterance and the death of the prophetic gift that god gave to paul the apostle and the speaking in tongues he told the corinthian christians i thank my god i speak in tongues more than you all and of course interpretation he could interpret everything and so you find paul the apostle he had all the gifts and then I began, I began to search, and I began to seek, and I began to just wait upon the Lord. And, and the reason I tell you, church, is this, that you too, you'll go ahead and you'll do the same thing. And you know, there are some leaders, there are some ministers, they will not tell you the books they read. They will not tell you the places they pray and how they pray. And they will not tell you the secret of how they add, what they add. But you see, I took it all, almost all the books of T.L. Osborne. But T.L. Osborne, in some case, he concentrates much on just healing. Just healing. And then God in Lindsay, with all these uh, books on the gifts of the Spirit. And of course, John G. Lake, all the sermons of John G. Lake, they are available. And then you find out some spectacular things with John G. Lake. It was in more than what you can find in many other places. And of course, Smith Wigglesworth, reading all those things, and, and, and you understand how these people manifested the power of God in their lives. I told you the other thing about Woodward Ether. And that woman, there's a book concerning her too. And then as you read all that, and then you see that there is a depth, there is a height that we can reach. And there will be exploits. And I'm believing that God is going to begin to raise up people over here. And you will do exploits in Jesus' name. And that's very important that as you take those things, you see, how do you read all those many books? Well, you need to understand. When I was in school, actually when I came out of school, and I finished my school search, Daddy didn't have money to send me to university immediately, and so I had to do my A-level a at home. And when you're doing A-level in mathematics, peer maths, and applied maths, that's really tough. But you know what I did? I take the book, the standard book, and I look at it, 600 pages. I ask myself, if I read 10 pages a day, how long will it take me to finish this book? 60 days, and I did that. And I trained myself in reading and studying. And I got distinction in that mathematics. And as I, without going to any HSC school or whatever, I just did all that 10 pages a day. And I'll make it so regular. It was like a vow. I wasn't even born again. It was when I became born again. I now applied D to the Bible. All these books I'm telling you about, I have a timetable. And then I read this and read this and read this. You'll be surprised till today. I still read almost every day. I still read John G. Lake. And I still read quite a lot of other materials. Because after the Lord has brought you up, and the Lord has given you the gifts, then you, keep, you need to keep on sharpening, sharpening all the instruments the Lord has given you. And that's why we come here tonight, so that this charisma and these gifts, the Lord will give unto you in Jesus' name. Leaders who know God, that is leaders having the manifestation of divine presence and divine power in their lives. They will do exploits exploits are extraordinary works of power supernatural acts of the holy spirit knowing god truly and knowing god fully will move us will move us from the realm of the natural to the realm of the supernatural tonight i divide the message to three parts number one the possession of charisma with christ-like character the possession of charisma with Christ-like character. Number two, the peril of charisma without 
Christ-like character. Number three, the pursuit of charisma with Christ-like character. Number one, the possession of charisma with Christ-like character. The charisma, that is the gifts of the Spirit, must go along with the character. Because it is when those two, when they are joined together, that there will be an explosion of power in your life. Now, think about this way. The charisma, those are the gifts. The character, that's the grace. That the grace gives us the life. The fruit of the spirit. And it's like this. Grace without gifts. What's the result? Powerlessness. You're saved. You're born again. You're living a righteous life. But the power of the Holy Ghost is not there. I remember a dear fellow, a dear person in our family. Very, very precious to me. Anytime I went to him in those days, immediately I dropped my bag like this or box. I must run to the house of that fellow. Because he was a relative. A nice, nice man. He became sick. When he became sick, he was, he was so wretched. And he was completely down. And I pitied him. That time I was even born again now. Because I loved him so much. But I didn't have the charisma. I didn't have the gifts. I didn't have the power. The grace was there to sympathize. And to say, how are you feeling now? I'm sorry about this, your sickness. God is a good God. I hope God will heal you. I could encourage him. But he didn't go far. Because it was grace without gift. It was powerless. And eventually, I discovered the power of the Holy Ghost. And then I had the power of the Holy Ghost in me. And, and that happened in the, you know, as I was here in the area of the West here, Lagos, and over here that I was. And then when I got the power and people were getting healed, then I ran home. I said, why is so? Because I knew not the power had come to pray for him. And he said, didn't you hear? He was dead. And when I heard that, I said, all the people remaining, I'm going to develop this power, the gift of the Spirit, so that anywhere anyone has any problem, I'll be able to get there immediately. That's the challenge I had. It was because of what happened in our family circle. That really pushed me to say, this will not happen again. The devil has cheated us enough. It will not happen again. Because grace without gifts is impotent, powerless. The second possibility, gifts without grace. That a person has the power, so to say. And the gifts, so to say. But the fruit of the spirit is not there. What's that going to lead to? Perdition perdition in dignity gifts without grace the charisma without character and the gifts of the spirit working miracle here and there and yet with no grace of god and there was a challenge you know in the earlier days even though deeper life had started this is one i want to mention now but I was still, I still had enough time to go to this ministry, that ministry here and there, and preach all about. And I was a man that, you know, we were actually doing, so we were really preaching together. Not that we are disabled. I'll be invited, he will be invited. And I'm telling you some great, great, mighty things that happened at that time. And uh, then eventually I discovered the gift was in this man, this other man I'm talking about now, the gift of the Spirit. But the character was missing. And eventually it was uh, coming to Lagos here. And the people in Lagos who knew me said, please, would you stay on the platform? So and so is coming so that you'll be able to support him in me. So I said, no, I'm sorry, I don't want to do that. Because I had some stories about him. And they pleaded with me. They said, please, please. If it's not because of me, because of us. Because you are here in Lagos. And people know you here in Lagos. You must be there. You must sit on the platform. Eventually, I, I agreed. I, I sat on the platform and he came. And this man is no more alive now. This man can talk. And he really thought I was just looking at him. And then he, when he finished, he wanted to demonstrate to the people about the gifts of the Spirit. 
And he turned to me and think about you. You are before the congregation and you are preaching about the Holy Ghost and about power, about transforming that spirit of God and, you know, praying for people. He said he was going to lay hands on them. And then he turned to me. I was, you know, sitting by the right hand side and he called my name and he said, you know, please uh, uh, let me show the people what I mean. I said, what do you mean? Let me lay hands on them. I said, not me. And then he said, don't do it like this. I said, I'm sorry. I still have something to discuss with you after the meeting. And we talk, I think it took about five minutes when he saw that I wasn't yielding. Then he turned to the okay, well, he doesn't want me to lay hands on him. And then, but you come here, I lay hands on you. He laid hands on them and, you know, did all his, all the things he wanted to do. When he finished, I called him out. I said, uh, I've been wanting to talk to you. All this demonstration and this, but now, listen. When you have the gifts of the Spirit, it doesn't only give you revelation, it gives you the courage to pass on the revelation. I said, I look at him directly, and I said, see all these things you are doing in the public. I hear that you have illegitimate child, you are living in adultery. And be because of the way I said it, I was so pointed, you know, he didn't argue. He just said, you know, they are not praying for me. Uh, that is why my weakness took hold of me. I said, well, if you are manifesting all this, if you have power over the devil, why don't you have power over your flesh? And you see, that kind of thing, having gifts without grace, will bring you into perdition, indignity. And then, number three, the third possibility is grace with gifts. Gifts with grace. That will bring productivity. That will bring increase. And that's why we're here. That the Lord will use us and grant us both charisma and character. The gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit must work together. That is, charisma and character must work together to produce a rewardable exploit. It is not all exploits that are rewardable. Because it's when you get to heaven that you'll get the reward. And you'll notice, by the way, there are nine gifts of the Spirit. There are nine fruits of the Spirit. That is, nine components in the fruit of the Spirit. And it's when the ninefold fruit will join together with the nine areas or branches of the gifts. That you are going to produce something, exploits, that will be rewardable. The saturation of the minister's life or the fruit of the spirit will sharpen the gift of the spirit in his life and it will make him powerful to penetrate and to produce results. The combination of the grace and the gifts will produce growth. There will be growth, there will be glory in that ministry. In First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. I'm reading to you from verse 12. As Paul the Apostle spoke to Timothy, he told Timothy the fruit aspect of the life and ministry is there. And the gift aspect of the ministry is also there. Let both work together. First Timothy chapter 4 verse 12. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. That's the grace. That's the fruit. That's the character. And then in verse 14, neglect, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, or the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. That's the gift. That's the power. And that is the dynamite. That is the charisma. And both must work together. Timothy, while you are showing and manifesting the fruit of the Spirit, don't neglect the gift either. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. Wherefore, I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. The gift upon thee that has come upon thee by upon you by the putting on of my hands. That's the charisma. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power. That spirit of power grants us the gift. And of love that gives us the grace, the fruit, the character. They must go together. The love and the power. The grace and the gift. 
the character and the charisma and of a sound mind. And actually, where as you see the way Paul the Apostle was talking to Timothy, you will see that Timothy was held to receive the gifts of the Spirit. And uh, already we have learned about Timothy. And you have seen the relationship and the intimacy between Timothy and Paul the Apostle. And Paul the Apostle did not go on, go about laying hands upon everybody to transfer the power and the gift upon them. But in the case of Timothy, you, you have seen the life of Timothy, the dependability. And therefore he laid hands on him and the presbytery laid hands on him and then he received the gifts in Romans chapter 1 verse 11. Romans chapter 1, reading from verse 11. It tells us here, Romans chapter 1, verse 11. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gifts. To the end, they may be, uh, ye may be established. I, I want to impart some spiritual gifts unto you. And uh, you know, it, it happens. I remember when in the, in the UK, I think it's Portsmouth. And I was having a week's uh, meeting there. They had actually arch in uh, that place, the Edlin Pentecostal Church in UK. They gathered together 2,500 of their ministers, their pastors. And the Edlin Church is almost like the Assemblies of God Church, they are Pentecostal. And they wanted me to come and talk to them on the gifts of the Spirit. In the morning sessions, I'll do Bible teaching. In the evening session, there'll be demonstration. And we did that. And then one of the pastors said, please come to our church in Portsmouth. And then I got to the church. Eventually, that was another time after the conference of the ministers. And then uh, they said, please, we don't want to put you in a hotel. We'll put you in the house of our assistant pastor. I said, that was all right. And uh, the assistant pastor, you know, took care and all that. And we didn't discuss much for my, for, uh, my first uh, three, four days. Uh, you know, I just go into the room all by myself, waiting upon the Lord. And then in the evening, we had a miracle service and mighty things took place. And I'd never been in that city before, in that church before. Word of knowledge will come out. They raise up their hands. I say, you are healed. And then they come out. They give their testimony. And the assistant pastor was watching. And then one of the students uh, attended the meeting. I went to the sociology class in, um, at the university there. And he said there's somebody coming from Africa. And uh, it's in a particular church, in Pentecostal church in our city here. Uh, can you allow him to come and talk to us on sociology? And the lecturer said, well, he's, um, you know, a preacher. Was he, uh, they said that the man had been in university before, but he did mathematics. So what does he know about sociology? Uh, but he told the assistant pastor. And the assistant pastor said, uh, Pastor, I don't know how you are going to respond to this. They are calling you at the university to come and talk to these students on sociology. And he said, please, uh, if you will have a chance, uh, it will be wonderful. I said, that's all right. And I said, when is it? He said, it's today. And I said, when are we getting there in 30 minutes time? I said, that's all right, let's go. That surprised me. He thought I would say no, because it's university. And because those are wise. And because the sociology is not my field, I said, let's go there. And then the students gathered together. And I said, Lord, you have all knowledge. And that's something where you link up with the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost, he, he fills you and he overflows you. And you are not afraid. And you know, there is no question that anybody will ask that the Holy Ghost does not have the answer. And so we got to the class and the lecturer introduced me to the class. I think he's even a professor. And then he sat down and then he handed over to me. He, he didn't know what will come out. And then I picked up sociology. And then I began to talk to them about Africa. And I had just 30 minutes to prepare. And when I finished, they wanted me to talk for 30 minutes. And then there might be questions for about 15 minutes or 20 minutes. I finished about uh, maybe almost one hour talking to them. They said, please, will you take questions? I said, go ahead. And then instead of 15, 20 minutes question time, we had about 45 minutes question time. They, they asked questions from here and there, and the Lord just gave them the answer. Then we came out of that place, and then the assistant pastor asked me, how did you know all that? I said, Holy Ghost. And then he said, would you uh, please uh, pray for me? I said, you know, I'm a conservative preacher. And I don't easily handsome people. 
And then I told him why. I don't know your life. I've never been here. This is my first time. I don't know you very much. And then he told me all about his life. He said, ask me any question. The man was eager. And then after he said that, I asked him questions. And I saw that his life, he, he, he was seeking after God. He said, can you pray for me now? And the Holy, Holy Spirit told me I should pray for him. Then I prayed for him. And then that was it. But we got to church in the evening, Friday. And that was going to be my last day there. And uh, they called me up and I preached. And then at the time of prayer, I said, now today we're going to do something different. That is the assistant pastor today who is going to minister to you. And I didn't tell him before, but I prayed for him in the house. And I said, you've got it now, come out here. And I handed over to him, began to pray for the people. He looked at me and did a sound like this as if, what are you bringing me to? I said, you've got it, go ahead. And he stood there. And when he stood there, I saw that he was a kind of, a, you know, a trembling. He didn't know what to say. And then I helped him out. He, he said, That's the way they taught me how to swim. The person who taught me, taught me how to swim, we got to the river. I was afraid to get into the river. And this fellow teaching me how to swim, he pushed me into the river. And in trying not to, not to be drowned, I began to move my hand. I began to swim. And then I did that to him. That's why I pushed him there. I said, you are the one to minister tonight. And because he was afraid, and then I told him the revelation that God, I, I whispered to him. I, I removed the microphone from his mouth and from my mouth too. I whispered to him, say, there's somebody there. And that this, this, don't say I said it, but you just say, there is somebody there. And then he said it. When he said it, the fellow raised up his hand. I then whispered, I said, pray for him. And then he prayed. I said, tell him, declare you are healed. He said, you are healed. And the fellow waved the hand and clapped and rejoiced. And then the man moved on. He said, you are there, mention the, you are there, mention, you are there, mention the problem. And the gift came upon him. And uh, when we finished the meeting, the pastor himself didn't have the gift. His assistant now had. And the pastor said, what did you do to my assistant? <laughs> and I'm telling you tonight, there's going to be a transfer. Yeah. Because there is exploit for the people of God in Jesus' name. Uh, you see, when, when that's what Paul the Apostle said here in Romans chapter 1, verse 11. He said, I long to see you that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. And actually, you know, I need to tell you this this is Congress. Many years ago, I you know I, I wanted to, you know, just transfer the part to the people of God as well to the ministers. And these uh, ministers, uh, the way I wanted to do it, I wanted to pick them up one by one, not, not a general meeting like this. And so I began to give out some messages. You will not know, but I can tell you. Uh, there was a brother I wanted to start with. At that time, we were coming together from, we'll group all the, um, all the states together. Coming from the west, they'll come here. All the states coming from south-south, they'll come over here. It was south-south at that time. They all came. And when they came, I gave, instead of handing the revival message in the night, myself, I gave it to a particular brother. And you know, sometimes when that is done, the church will be thinking, ah, the GS is tired tonight. He's losing his voice. He wants to rest. But I cannot announce to you that this is what I want to do. And then the people, they began to show signs as if, why is not the pastor preaching? Why is it so and so preaching? But that day, I didn't mind. And so I put this brother there. I said, this is what to preach. And then he wanted to show me his heart. And I said, keep the heart. And that's all right. I know you can do it. Just go ahead and preach. And then when he, after finishing preaching, revival time. He said, rise up, let us pray. When he said, rise up, let us pray. He said, in Jesus' name, he began to say, our Father, I knew you wanted to start just praying to close the meeting. I quickly got up from my seat. I turned and I said, don't do that. That you are going to minister to the people the way I normally do. He looked at me surprised. I said, I'm behind you here. I'm supporting you. You are going to do it. And then when I saw that he didn't know what to do, I said, now there's somebody right here in front of you in the middle over there. This is a problem he has because, you know, the revelation is even when I'm sitting down, when I'm not talking or preaching, I know the revelation is there. I said, that person is there. Just get him up and tell him and then say in the name of Jesus. It's not in me. It's in that name. He'll be healed. And the brother said that. And when he said I didn't know what to do again, then I said, you know, somebody over there is in that corner. And this is the problem. And I described it. Then he said that the fellow, by the time he, do, he did that, I think I only told him two things. And then he went on himself. For the next 15 minutes, the power came upon him. You know, when, when there's liberty to minister, and when there's liberty, sometimes when I come to the stage, 
and uh, you know i want to leave something in the state over there and i want to be a blessing to the overseer and to the leaders to the workers there and i want to impart some things to them so that the manifestation of the power of god can continue while I'm, before i leave then the people they'll be in a hurry and then i will not have the liberty that's why i stopped that kind of program many years ago but we're starting again i said we're starting again you are going to be power dynamites in jesus name and so paul the apostle said he will impart some spiritual gift unto them and this is and from that time the lord will be walking with you and the power of the lord will be walking with you in jesus name in mark chapter 16 mark chapter 16 i'm reading from verse 20 in verse 20 we're told after the lord had said and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils and they shall speak with new tongues and they shall take off serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them they shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover then we're told in verse 20 and they went forth and preached everywhere the lord walking with them confirming the word with signs following how about the people that have they seem to have the gift but there's no character there's no grace point number two the peril of charisma without christ-like character the peril of charisma without christ-like character is it possible that a person will have charisma and yet without christ-like character Oh yes, on the basis, on the strength of the words of Jesus. In Matthew chapter 7, reading from verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of, the fa of my Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you depart from me, ye that walk in equity. And from there you can see that it's possible to have charisma without character, gift without grace, power without purity. And has that happened to anybody? The people that seems to have some great, great leadership qualities, but they didn't have the character. Uh, we write the word leadership again when well, you've seen this a uh, word leadership for you to understand there are good leaders there are bad leaders there are some leaders with charisma plus character there are some people that have charisma minus character and we're looking at them in the peril l lucifer you know lucifer he was uh, a cherub the morning star even and the one that had that great power and, and do you see here in uh, revelation chapter revelation chapter 16 in revelation chapter 16 looking at verses 13 and 14 the devil satan that is what lucifer became after he fell do you know that he even had, and he still even manifests some kind of charisma some kind of power as we look at um, revelation chapter 16 reading from verse 13 and I had him in verse uh, chapter 16, chapter 16, reading from verse 13. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles. It's possible. Lucifer that fell, yet having that kind of power, but not no character. I about Eli. Eli was a great leader. He was leader of the people, but the character was missing, the peril, Absalom. And when you think of Absalom, L-E-A-A -A for Absalom. Absalom had the charisma, not the gifts of the spirit, but the charisma that would gather people together. That man could convince people. And those people were so convinced, and they abandoned David, and they followed after him. But he perished because it was charisma without character. How about Demas? Demas was a fellow worker with paul the apostle fellow libra and yet having loved this present world he departed how about esau you remember what the bible says about esau in hebrews chapter 12 hebrews chapter 12 looking at it from verse 15 it tells us there in hebrews 12 15 about esau 
and it tells us about the peril of the people that seem to have the you know the leadership position or the charisma without the character and it says looking diligently lest any of you feel lest any man feel of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one muscle of meat sold his birthright and if you have read about uh, many many great people uh, you've had, have you heard about A.A. A. Allen a, if you've heard about Shambak R.W. Shambach, actually A.A. A. Allen was the one that trained um, Shambach and if you, if you know the, the way Shambach preaches or if you know the way he manifests authority and power that man just convinces people and uh, you cannot sleep in his meeting and everything came through A.A. Allen and A.A. Allen, that man had charisma, he had the gifts of the spirit and you know in my reading and study, I had to study about him too and right? his material is true he had some people at the bible school and these people at the bible school they were trying to cast out devil and then they held their bibles in their hand and the devil was stubborn and the devil will not come out and they'll come like this and then turn back and come like this and run back and and strike the man with their bibles and the fellow was so was so violent and then a a allen came and when allen came there and then just chill like this and he said young man possessed with the devil now you demon listen this is a a allen in the name of jesus come out and the thing came out immediately but you know a allen was a drunkard he couldn't control his appetite alcohol and in america you know when you are driving and then the, the, those policemen they know how to test they tested him and they saw that it, it was it was his blood system was totally saturated with alcohol charisma without character i'm sure you heard about um jimmy swaggart jimmy swaggart when that man preaches when he preaches like this if he attacks the president of america at the time he was preaching all the people were clapping for him I've seen him on stage, I've listened to him, that man, he could preach. And yet, do you know that the police people, they were trailing him about. And that's what something you find about Billy Graham, although Billy Graham is not Pentecostal. Billy Graham has a kind of conviction and a kind of practice, will never take any lady in his vehicle, nowhere, anytime. And there were times they tried to set the stage for Billy Graham. And you know they'll set him up so as to kind of uh, disqualify him and degrade him and it will be you might go for a meeting somewhere where his wife is not uh, with him. his wife most of the time is with him but sometimes not with him and then they'll set him up and he'll get some of these uh, ladies in a particular case they got a particular lady and the lady was only wearing dress but each wear underwear and then came uh, near uh, Billy Graham so that you know can trick uh, Billy Graham so that he can be in the vehicle and then the police people will come then they will you know kind of the woman because you know she was paid for it she'll open up herself and they will see she didn't have any underwear and then they'll say here's Billy Graham they will publish it all over the world but that trap did not get Billy Graham it will not get you I said it will not catch you you know especially when you have the gifts of god in your life there are people that will be used of the devil and they'll try to set you up and they'll try to make and you will not know they'll be standing somewhere they'll be staying somewhere and then they will send those emissaries and those their servants and slaves they set them forward it's a great preacher it's a mighty preacher let him fall let, let us set him up but you see jimmy swaggart he fell into it and eventually ruined himself and there was a man, there was a man I, I was reading about in those early years, not too early, I think in the 80s. And then I, you know, at that time, the Lord had even filled me with the Holy Ghost and the Lord had given me gifts and all that. But I've heard about this uh, uh, W.V. Grant. And I've read a lot of his books. And I know that, you know, uh, the senior, uh, W.V. Grant was dead. And now you have the junior. And he was still there. And I said, I want to see a, the son of a great man like this. And then some of his uh, meetings, the way he did his own, he, he would, uh, you know, talk to people behind. He say, what's your sickness? You have this. And all the doctor's report, that woman will give, will give uh, this, uh, um, this WB Grant a junior. And then eventually, they'll bring them to the meeting. He'll be walking about. And if you didn't know, you'll not know that he just, uh, you know, he arranged that behind. And then he'll say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. 
What's your, you are, then he'll mention the name. And the fellow will say, yes. And he paid that fellow for this. You have this kind of sickness, yes. Who is your doctor? Lord, help me, Lord, help me. Mr. So Dr. So-and-so says your doctor, and that fellow is, And the people will clap their hands. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And the fellow will get up and then be demonstrating. And this WV grant just takes everything. And if you didn't know, you'll think this is miracle. But because I heard about the father, and I, I was in America, and then I said, let me visit this man. And I visited, immediately I entered like this. The Lord told me there's something wrong here. And then I looked at the office, I saw the lady there. As I saw that lady, and the lady was just secretary. As I saw the lady, I knew that there's something wrong. And then I got to W.B. Grant in his office and he said, why are you here? I said, well, I've learned about your father and I've read a lot about your father. And I'm, I've also read about you. And then, uh, you know, we discussed a little. And uh, he, he was, the Lord, at, at least that day, the Lord opened his eyes. To, he said, please help me. Do you have anything to tell me? I said, yes. He said, what do you have to tell me? I said, you need to improve on your life. And you need to have, you know, I don't want to say much. This is my first time being here in your office. But this lady secretary, why don't you allow her to go and replace her? It's not going to help your ministry. And then I left. Some years later, I divorced his wife and married that secretary. Not only that, eventually, American the government found out about things, about him, money and all the other things. I think he's still now in jail. You see, when, even though I don't spend long time in those places, you see, the gifts of the Spirit. And I talk to people. It's only that, you know, here in deeper life, uh, sometimes some of our leaders, they avoid me. They run away from me. I want to get close. I want to help them. I want to sharpen their iron. But, you know, they, they, they run away from me because uh, I don't understand why they do that. Or oh, in Thailand. And in Thailand, this was a first class brain. He did a chemistry, I think, economics too. And he had first class. He had about me, invited me to Thailand. And uh, when we got there, the Lord did some marvelous things. Great, great things. And, uh, you know, I watched him and all that. By the time we finished, and he, he called me and he said, you need to talk to me before you go. I've seen the way you minister in the congregation, what you're doing, and I want to have this kind of power and authority and everything, and I want my ministry to improve. Then I said, what's your goal? He told me his goal, and the vision, painted everything, his strategist. I said, well, for you to actually achieve that, and you know it's uh, those early days i wasn't i wouldn't whatever i wanted to say i just said there were two ladies there who were in the car and i pointed to those two ladies and they were hearing what i was saying i said you know this lady this lady they're going to ruin you and you are going to be kicked out of the ministry if you don't separate from them and they were hearing hey, that's just the point of having the charisma because in the charisma you have courage as well the courage to be able to tell this is this and uh, this person you know he tried to give it i said no don't give me excuse i'm telling you it's just a matter of time that you are going to get into trouble and eventually i came back to nigeria a few months after that he wrote to me but was still writing apologetically he said please pray for me our ministry they are trying to uh, you know blackmail me and they're saying that I'm having affairs with you know this and this and I knew that he was and but he was still giving excuse and then the last time I heard about him the leadership of that child because he will not correct what was wrong in his life they kicked him out of the ministry and now he's into politics in Thailand and the thing I'm telling you is there is a possibility of having charisma without character and if you have a leader that is able to help you and develop you on the area of character, on the area of charisma, there's a lot you can do. L for Lucifer, E for Eli, A for Absalom, D for Demas, E for Esau, R for Reuben. You know, he was the firstborn in the family. And he also had the possibility of being the prince, the leader in that family. Unstable as water that shall not excel. S for Samson, you know his story. Do I need to tell the story of Samson? You know his story. Power without purity. Gift without grace. Charisma without character. Ananiah, that's in Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 1 to 17. Read it yourself later. Ananiah, Jeremiah chapter 28. I, Iscariot, you know him, Iscariot. He listened to all the messages of Jesus. And the Lord Jesus gave all the twelve, including Judas Iscariot, he gave them power. 
and they went out and when they came back they actually did exploits for some time but it didn't take long that man was stealing his sons were sticky he also had covetous heart his carriers he didn't make it p you will not know this but you will just write now his name his name is pasha pasha p-a-s-h-u-r it's in jeremiah chapter 20 verses 1 to 6 a leader among the people he ruined himself i pray you will not ruin yourself that's why we're told in first corinthians chapter 13 first corinthians chapter 13 I'm reading from verse 1. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity, and become a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal, and though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I can remove mountains, and, and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity, it profited me nothing. Point number three. In point number three, we have the pursuit of charisma with Christ-like character. The pursuit of charisma with Christ-like character. In chapter 12 of 1 Corinthians, verse 31. But covet honestly the best gifts, yet I shown to you a more excellent way. Covet honestly. Desire. Pursue. Be passionate about it. Because if you have the gifts, you'll be able to help more people. And the ministry, your ministry will be a ministry of power, as well as a ministry of purity. Covet honestly the best gifts. In chapter 14, verse 1, follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Desire them, and the Lord will put them in your life in Jesus' name. But rather, that she may prophesy. Here is the promise of the Lord Jesus Christ for you and for me. It tells us in John chapter 14, reading from verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. Greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. It will happen again. I said it will happen again. If you have the desire, the Lord will fulfill that desire. In the years of revival in the 80s here in our church, we found that the power of God came upon not just the preachers, not just the coordinators, not just the zonal leaders, not just the women representative, women coordinators, came upon the people of God. I remember in one of the cases that we were going to have the revival hour at Bagada. And there was a lame uh, sister that was uh, coming in a taxi. And our ushers were outside directing the people to go inside. We have ushers outside, ushers inside. And uh, I said, they were, what did they say? Sister usher was there outside. And uh, the vehicle stopped, that's the taxi. And the wife of the paralyzed man came out of the vehicle. And then told that sister usher, please, can you help me so we can carry uh, my husband out into the church. So that uh, while the musician is going on today, I'm believing God for my husband. And the sister usher said, let her come down. And the woman said, you don't understand, my husband is paralyzed. And we need to take her, him out and then to be seated in a conspicuous place in the church. So that while the pastor is preaching, then uh, the minister will come and he will get healed. And the sister said, let her come down. And the woman explained again, sorry, you don't understand. I'm saying my husband is paralyzed and help me. And the sister maintained her word, let her come down. I believe that's the gift of faith. I said as a gift of faith. And when the wife of the woman did not, of the man did not understand, the sister held the door and said, Papa, please come out. And the, and the man came out and began to walk. It can happen again. I said it can happen again. And over here in Lagos, we had brothers, sisters, and even people that didn't have, you know, great title, whatever, on the street. It came on us in Lagos at that time. Revival was everywhere. That some of our people, they will see mad people like this on the road. And then they will say, in the name of Jesus, evil spirit will come out. That day has started again. That day will come again in Jesus' name. 
And those of you from Onicha, you might, if you were there when Pastor Okoro was still at Onicha and I came for meeting there, do you remember that man that had an evil spirit, totally mad, and they padlocked the hand and they padlocked the leg. And it, we, we had a, you know, the meeting that night in Onicha, and as we were praying like this, I said, all those evil spirits of madness come out in Jesus' name. That man became normal immediately. And then he came out and he said, why is the padlock in my hand? And then he was talking normally. And he removed all the padlock. And then they shaved his head. And everything was alright. And those of you from Calabar, you will remember the power of the Lord. When Pastor Odi was there. And then it was, you know, Saturday, uh, Friday night. And then Saturday morning. And before that time, another minister for America had been there. You, you know Calabar now. And you know all the, all the, all the occultic uh, powers that are there. When that man came over there uh, to Calabar, they, they didn't allow him to hold the meeting. Because as he started the meeting like this, rain everywhere and rain drove everybody away and when he, the rain had driven him away then I said I was coming to car I didn't know what had happened I said I'm coming and Pastor Odi did not tell me that uh, this place so uh, the rain drove, uh, drove the other person away we don't know what to happen you know, they just got ready and before I came the rain was falling on the day of the meeting that I was going to have in Calabar the rain stopped immediately and then we went for Friday night we didn't know Friday night all through in the town the rain was the rain was pouring down seriously in the place about uh, two or three kilometers radius around where we were there was no drop of rain and some miracle miracles happened there it was when we finished the meeting that uh, you know we, we began to see that the, the town was totally wet and then we finished that meeting on friday morning on saturday morning as we finished the meeting i came back to lagos on sunday in fact uh, so many people came to know the lord that they were having two services before for the following Sunday, uh, they, they had three services after that miracle time of Friday and Saturday, and it's going to happen again because by the grace of god i'm going to touch you in your place and then you and i uh, the brothers and the sister we join together in this dynamite of the holy ghost and we're going to shake we're going to shake your states in jesus name then you remember those from Calabar. If you are long there, if you are not just Johnny, just come. If you are, you know, if you've been here for a long time, you will remember Samuel. He had been mad. Everybody knew Samuel all over the town. Carry, he will carry all the all the rubbish and put it on the head of Samuel. And then as, on Sunday, we finished the meeting on Saturday. On Sunday, I was, was passing by like this. He got in front of Deeper Life Bible Church. As he got in front of that church, the evil spirit left him immediately. And then he entered the church. He said. Why, why am I here? Why am I like this? And those good, good ushers, God will bless the ushers. I say God will bless the ushers. Those ushers, they took, they took him and they bathed his head and they washed him. And now they witnessed to him. He became a child of God and he became a member of the church. And those of you from Bini will remember. We are to have this miracle service in Bini. And they told us, they told you at that time in Bini City. And those days, there, Pastor Francis Igalo was there at that time. There was a tree that was there. The tree had been there for more than 100 years. And we needed to clear all that ground to be able to have a crusade there. The miracle service there. And they told them in Bini, if you cut that tree, somebody will die. Because they said that tree, they had been worshipping it for a long time. And then a Francis got in touch with me and said, we have the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you cut that thing, that thing, nobody will die. And they did a Jericho march around the, that tree. If you were in Bini, you will remember at that time. And then when they did the Jericho march, Francis got and somebody cut down the thing. They uprooted everything to start with nobody died. And eventually we started on Friday night. And when we started, come and see miracle. Blind eyes open and everything happening. It, that's the place where that woman that was crawling on the hands and the legs. It was when we finished the meeting. I told them the miracle is there. Go back home. You have got your miracle just like i'm telling you tonight you have got the power you have got the charisma and if you you may not even feel anything you may not feel anything the day you got married you feel you, you thought you'll feel taller you didn't feel tall you thought you'll not be able to eat you'll not you know joy will so overcome you'll not be able to even drink water but after you marry ah, is that what they call marriage have i married now you didn't feel anything at all whether you are feeling or not the power is there tonight and then you know as i told him i said the miracle is going on with you now you are going back home you have the miracle and that woman was still crawling on the ground and they picked her up and put her in the vehicle and she was saying to the daughter maybe i'm a great sinner why is it i'm not here everybody has got it i've not got it and eventually when they got to their village as they got to their village everybody was getting out the woman was still crying and then when everybody got down they wanted to carry him like this the holy ghost came upon her 
and she rose up hands all right legs all right and then she jumped down from the vehicle and everybody began to celebrate they declared public holiday in that village for two days the farmers will not go to their farm the farmers will not do anything and and then they are not allowed us to have the church in that place because it's a place of idolatry they invited us if your god can do this come and put a church there that day has started again it will happen with you it will happen with you it will happen everywhere you go in jesus name get up and get your own charisma you will do exploits you will do exploits my brother this is your time my dear sister this is your time you will do exploits in the name of the lord the power of the lord is available here in jesus name we pray believe tonight and it shall be so i said believe tonight it shall be so you are qualified already the cleansing of the blood of jesus has qualified you you need the power i know you are baptized in the holy ghost and i know you are saved and sanctified and filled but what i'm talking about you need the gifts of the holy spirit and don't say i'm not a pastor I, why are you not a pastor of course you are a pastor of course you are a preacher you might not be called a pastor now but wait and see the dynamite of god in your life whether they give you title or not you will do exploits in your family you will do exploits in your place of work you will do exploits on the street you will do exploits you will be a soul winner you'll be an evangelist you'll be a mighty man and a mighty woman of god in jesus name and after tonight don't doubt the power of the lord in your life if you don't if you don't get to the river how will you know you can swim if you don't put the food on the fire how will you know you can cook and if you don't try to help somebody how will you know you can help somebody you have it already and after tonight if you see anybody sick pray for them they will get healed if you see anybody tormented pray for them they will get delivered and don't say it's only the pastor who can do this it's only so and so can. you will do it you you will do it you you will do it you it has come to your turn raise up your hand you have it already father in the name of jesus we thank you tonight because we are god of love and a god of power lord i know you have raised me up but i'm not any special person the same thing you have done for me you can do it for my brothers you can do it for my sisters in jesus name we're all your servants whatever area of work we are they might call us by different names and different titles in your sight we are the servants of god the brothers are the servants of god the sisters are the servants of god i pray oh lord you will pour your power down upon every one of them in jesus name lord you raised me all to be able to transfer knowledge and to transfer ability and when i was in school you allowed me to transfer the knowledge of mass to all those young people and they got distinctions most of them lord the time has come now here are the people that are closest to me on earth there's no other group of people as close to me as this they are in my heart i love them and I know you love them. And I want them to have what you have given to me. Lord, this, this time now, by the authority you have given me, I transfer the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost upon them in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray the gifts of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, and the word of knowledge, and the word, the design of spirit, and the gift of faith, and the working of miracle, and the healing of the sick, and casting out devils, and the speaking in tongues, and the interpretation, and the prophecy, and the power to do exploits, I transfer to them in Jesus' name. I anoint them with your power. I pray, O oh Lord, your spirit will move them your spirit will walk within them they will never be the same in jesus name any spirit of fear and timidity that will not allow them to challenge the evil power and to do the works that are mighty i cast out all the spirit of timidity in jesus name my brother you are now a sharp threshing instrument in the hand of the almighty god my dear sister you are now a sharp threshing instrument in the hand of the almighty god Go out and succeed. Go out and reproduce. Go out and manifest power. And this power you have received will be visible, visibly manifested in your ministry in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray that this month immediately will begin to hear testimonies. 
of what you have begun to do in all the places you are sending your people in jesus name confirm it O lord i know it is done in jesus name we pray amen i have got it